Welcome back to Bargaining 101. I'm William Spaniel, and this lecture is on uncertainty and bargaining failure. We are still in Chapter 2 of Game Theory 101 Bargaining. Check the video description for more information on that. Now, remember back to last time, we were looking at this game with one-sided incomplete information, or asymmetric information, where Barbara knew the value of her own outside option, but Albert was uncertain about it. He could only speculate whether Barbara had a particularly low outside option or a particularly high value for an outside option. And what we did is figured out, based off of what Barbara would do if she was weak or strong, how Albert would mitigate this uncertainty. And specifically what we saw is that if P is less than two-thirds, in other words, if the probability that Barbara is weak is sufficiently low, calculated using the payoffs from the game tree, then Albert plays it safe. He makes a high offer that the strong type would be willing to accept. So the strong type accepts, and of course the weak type is really thrilled with the offer. It's getting a lot more than uh, Barbara would be getting a lot more in this case when she's weak with this game with incomplete information and uncertainty than she would be in a complete information game where Albert actually knew what her outside option looked like. So in this case, we actually see bargaining working, and this is actually tilting slightly to the favor of Barbara, because Barbara, when she's weak, is getting more than she would be otherwise. Now, on the other hand, when P is greater than two-thirds, in other words, when the probability that Barbara is weak is sufficiently high, again, compared to the payoffs that we had in the game tree in the previous slide, this time, something more interesting happens. Albert makes the low offer, and this is what I want to analyze. What happens when Albert makes the low offer? Well, the weak type of Barbara accepts. That's because there's a very high degree of probability that Barbara is weak, and so Albert is tailoring his offer to Barbara to get the weak type of Barbara to accept. So the weak type of Barbara accepts. However, the strong type of Barbara is facing a very small offer, a weak offer, from Albert, and by virtue of that, she has a better payoff by taking her outside option. So the strong type of Barbara rejects this offer from Albert. Now, think back to a game with complete information. If we're in this situation, in the world where Barbara is actually strong, she's not the weak type, but she's actually realized as the strong type, this is what that game looks like after we erase everything else from the game tree. Now, we've seen this game before, right? This is just a simple ultimatum game with Barbara having a particular outside option. And what we know from this circumstance is that Albert will be making an offer with complete information. Again, this is not actually what's going on in the game with incomplete information, but if we think about an alternate world where Albert did have information about what Barbara's type was and he knew that Barbara was strong, Albert would be making an offer that Barbara would be willing to accept. And this means that they would divide the surplus, albeit going to Albert mostly, or just about all of the surplus going to Albert, so a great division for Albert. But nevertheless, what we see here is efficient bargaining working out in the situation with complete information. And so one of the key takeaways from this game with uncertainty is that uncertainty can lead to efficient outcomes. Without the uncertainty, again, with complete information, the parties would be able to reach a deal that would leave them both better off. And yet when you have incomplete information, when you have this uncertainty, when Albert does not know whether Barbara is the strong type or the weak type, and he really suspects that Barbara is this weak type, this gives Albert all the incentive to be overly aggressive in the bargaining process, and this results in a situation where after the fact, if Albert had known that Barbara was the strong type, type, he would have been happy to reach an agreement, and there would have been an exchange of goods, they would have made the trade, and they both would have been better off as a result of that. So this is actually quite frightening and scary if you're someone who's very pro-efficiency, and I think most of, in this, most of us in this world should promote efficiency because, heck, it's efficient. That's why it's that word. It's a good thing. We like efficiency, and yet what we're seeing is in a world with this uncertainty, inefficient outcomes are possible, and that is a bad thing. Now, one thing you might be wondering here is if uncertainty is the root of this evil, if uncertainty is causing inefficiency, 
why doesn't Albert and Barbara, or why don't Albert and Barbara figure out a way to resolve this problem? Why don't, for example, Albert and Barbara talk to each other? Why doesn't Albert just ask Barbara whether she is this strong type or this weak type, and then tailor the offer accordingly based off of Barbara's answer? And so what we're going to be looking at in the next lecture is something called asymmetric information, which we've seen before, and incentives to misrepresent. And this incentive to misrepresent is actually going to cause bargaining to break down just like it is currently, and why Albert will not be able to effectively ask Barbara what her type is, whether she's weak or strong. So I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope to see you next time when we address those incentives to misrepresent. Take care.